Welcome, welcome to the wonderful, beautiful Yukti Rao. She's very kindly come to share her experience, her journey inside of the Living Abundance Mastermind, my 12 month program. So I'm going to introduce you to Yukti before she shares her journey and experience with us. Yukti Rao is a mentor for highly productive, high powered, driven women, helping them create a joyful and balanced life without sacrificing themselves, their home, their family or career. Yukti worked in corporate America as an engineer and marketer for more than two decades and has been an entrepreneur and coach for the last five years. She lives a joyfully imperfect life with her two teens, her husband, her dog in beautiful Southern California. Welcome, darling. It's so lovely to have you here with us. Thanks, Lara. It's lovely to be here and share the space with you. Gorgeous. So let's cast back to where you were before we started working together. Um, before you had entered the Living Abundance Mastermind, can you tell us a little bit about where you were then, what was going on for you, how you were feeling, how you were doing, if you can remember? I, I can. I can actually remember distinctly. It was actually around this time last year that I said yes to joining the mastermind. Um, and I was in this space where I was launching a new coaching program and I was like, I want to make money right now out of this. But there was a there was a desperation to it. Like there was this um, not feeling grounded. I was doing what I thought I loved, but at the same time, I was still doing it the the old way that I knew. And I just didn't know any different, honestly. Um, so that was my work. And even in my personal space, I had been in the space of where, hey, I am an entrepreneur and I'm, I'm a coach for many years. And yet I felt a bit like an imposter, honestly, uh, in that space. I also um, recognize now, I mean, at that time, I didn't recognize all these things, guys, let's be honest. Uh, sometimes it takes really looking at yourself from uh, from behind, going in the future that you can see some of these things and have perspective. So I do have kindness and uh, complete uh, grace for who I was a year ago. But that's kind of where I was. I was... Um, I was in this space of like, I want it all, but I wanted it all from, um, I would say a space of still being uh, in the wounded masculine energy that I had been in a while before that. So, but I did not recognize that mm. at that time. I did not recognize that. And for those who don't know what the wounded masculine is, what does that look like? The wounded masculine, how does that play out in um, women's lives? Good question. Now, I'm not going to go in depth into here. Of course, Lara talks about it in her mastermind a lot. And I talk about it in my work also. But the wounded masculine is really the energy of competition, of uh, wanting something, but just pushing for it instead of allowing yourself to receive it and creating a space where you create it from a, for me, the word is joy, create it from a place of joy. It's it's from a, a place of, um, the word escapes me. Uh, yeah, the place of wounding, like uh, the place of like, I want it, but it's because I don't have it. Not from a place of, I want it because this is what belongs to me. Mm -hmm. so very simply I'm just putting it very in very simple terms we can go in a lot more detail about it but that's kind of what yeah so like com competition yeah. dry like pushing forcing yes. uh, competitive energy yeah I exactly so again like a normal way that we think that's how you become successful right <laughs> exactly exactly like in this world you're taught that that's the way to achieve success by pushing by driving hard by that I don't mean not being driven but by driving hard from a place where it's not in congruence with who you really are yeah yeah exactly thank you so much for explaining that it's um 
Really powerful. Beautiful. So do you remember, well, I remember, I'm just wondering where you remember that m- moment, right? Where you're on the fence, you're getting the sense that you wanted to dive in deeper into this work together. You wanted to join the Living Abundance Mastermind. Do you remember what was going through your head, right? In that choice point, that choice just before you're about to make an investment in your change, in your growth, in your transformation. Do you remember what was going on for you in that choice point? Yes, because I go there often. Let's be honest. Uh, But I have learned to ground myself more now. At that time, I didn't feel, I knew in my heart, like the answer was yes. It was very clear to me. But my head was not in alignment with my heart, which happens very often. So um, I was in the space of like, how am I going to come up with money? How am I going to tell my husband? What makes it okay for me to invest in this when I could use this money for A, B, C, D, so many other things that I could use it for the kids, for the husband, for the vacation, for the dog, a number of things. So my mind went to all these places like, oh, I, but when it came down to it, what I recognized is that at some level, I didn't feel like I deserved to invest that money in myself, unless it was for a purpose that served somebody else or something else as well. Yes. Beautifully said. And that is very common, particularly for women. So thank you for sharing that. And then you bravely stepped into the Living Abundance Mastermind. And we've had a beautiful 12 months together. What have been some of the the shifts, the changes, the transformations, or some of the things that have happened for you within this experience? Um. I think the biggest shift for me has been more internal than external. And it is starting to show up more and more in my external world as well. And it has shown up as um, over the 12 month period. But I think the internal shift for me has been the biggest thing. First and foremost, when I quit my corporate job about seven years or so ago, I thought I'd give myself time to rest and I did for a short period of time. And then I jumped right into, oh, what next? Like most highly productive driven women will do like, it's like, what's next? What do I do next? Because there's a drive inside you to actually um, produce something, to make an impact, to help others, to serve others. What There's all of this energy inside you driving you to do something but it's where it's driving you from. That's what's important. And it took me a while to understand that. And that has been the biggest piece that has come together for me in this mastermind in the last year. But before I could actually step into that, I actually needed to recognize what rest and relaxation or in Lara's words, words, luxuriating in my life really felt and meant So when I first stepped into the mastermind, I was already like, oh, I'm launching this. I'm rushing into this and I need need this from the mastermind. And it came to a halt very soon after I came into the mastermind. Firstly, as I started doing the work, I noticed this ability to relax and really enjoy, like enjoy my life which I had never felt, even when I had taken a, taken breaks, whether it was when I had my kids or whether it was in between jobs or whether it was in between letting go of one career and stepping into a whole new life after that. I'd never given myself real permission to rest, relax, and enjoy my life. That, having that perspective and what it feels feels like and you know like in your bones and in your body is so critical so critical Um, and I'm especially speaking to people like me who are really driven and highly productive because for them it's it's a foreign language it's not something it's something they stopped doing so long ago maybe in the childhood uh, that that's not something they are connected with anymore 
for me, reconnecting with that part of me was so critical because only from that place could I reach the point where I could actually step into more of the feminine energy of receiving, of uh, of being in that space, uh, of creating from that space of like, relaxation and joy and now that energy is also pretty fast moving as I'm discovering but it's different from the energy of push 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 versus receive and and then um, it's like a river flowing yeah. it's like flowing with the current or pushing against the current really that's what it felt like and I think that was the biggest change um actually deepening into my feminine energy and allowing myself to rest, relax and receive allowed me to turn a page into another new chapter of my life. Mm, That's, I, yeah, I, I think that was the biggest um, internal shift for me. It started by, by stepping into relaxing and resting to allowing myself to be in that space even giving up my coaching practice for a while and actually stopping it completely because that's what I was um, called to do. That's what I needed. That's what I needed. Not everybody does, but that's what I needed to actually step away from all the shoulds and have tos and this is the way it must be to allow space to create from a different space, which is kind of where I am today. And it's amazing to me that a year later um, that I can find joy in creating what I want to, not be just because I, I have to serve somebody else because even, even the energy of service I recognized for me was coming not fr from a space of filling gaps within myself and not from a feeling of being worthy of sharing myself mm -hmm. and that today I feel like now when I go and do my the work to mentor other women I am coming from a more whole and complete space of wanting to share more of me because I am worthy and deserving and to show them that they are worthy and deserving as well mm -hmm. Mm. there's really giving from a deeper and richer place within right it's sort of there's still service you still want to serve it's just yeah. coming to a different place rather than from the lack not enough not good enough not worthy to wow yeah. <laughs> More than exactly. worthy. it's amazing so it's not necessarily like what we're doing changes it how how you're doing it changes how you're sitting yeah. in the driver's yeah. life yeah it's amazing and so brave and what would you say you had to sh let go of or shift or what belief did you have to shift in order to be able to shift the way that you've been working? What would you say the inner kind of peace was for you? I think first and foremost, I had to give up the belief of what success looks like, mm. what wealthy looks like. Because when I came in, I had a perspective that wealthy is all about money. Uh, success is all about success in career and how you look on the outside. Now, I've been doing this work for many years. So I kind of knew, like mentally, emotionally even, but I didn't know um, that, the, that what the belief that really Wealth and success starts with first loving yourself and knowing you're worthy and deserving and then coming from that space to serve others. And then everything comes together because wealth and success is not just about money, not just about your career, not just about how things look on the outside. It's really more about what's going on inside you. And that's what creates the world where you're joyful, you you get to spend time with your family from a place of joy, not from a place of, oh, I have to take care of them. Mm -hmm. I have to get this right. 
Um, so it was when I, so I'm, I'm explaining it to you. I'm, I'm trying, what I'm trying to share is that even though um, I had to be, uh, stop looking at things and believing that wealth and success had to look a certain way, what it really came down to it was that I had to really believe that I was worthy of it all. The biggest thing I had to give up was believing my self-worth came from how much money I made, how successful I looked in the world, how good a mom I was, how good a wife I was, how my house looked, all of these things. Like my self-worth did not come from how I showed up in the outside world, what I produced in the outside world. My self-worth was just being me and acknowledging who I was and every part of me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big part of your work here, Lara. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You've explained that so beautifully well. So I like to call this integrated wealth, where it's your inner world and your outer world are connected, right? Where most of us, we have this outer world, but it's severed from our inner world. And that's where, you know, I think we experience a lot of, a lot of pain and struggle and we go into all this fascinating behaviors. <laughs> and we haven't been taught that it's possible to create powerfully and effectively from this place you're speaking of, of self-love, of self-worth, of relaxing more of being we, we we literally just don't know that that's a thing that works <laughs> um and you're modeling it beautifully thank you so much and so brave so so brave and so so beautiful and goodness me right like it just cuts through so much bs and makes a much more clear focused direct path between you and what you want almost to the point i think our minds go is it, is it allowed to be that simple <laughs> is it really <laughs> So is there anything else you would like to share for anyone else who's looking from the outside in, interested, curious, exploring, feeling a call? Is there anything else you'd like to share from your heart, from your experience inside the mastermind, from life inside the mastermind that you'd like others to know about? I have to tell you guys that I actually uh, talked to Lara a year before I actually said yes. Like a year before that, I had a conversation with her. I, I knew I wanted to do the work, but my mind and I just wasn't, um, it was, it felt like too much to me at that time. And I wish I hadn't waited for a year. I really do. I think um, the work has a very deep impact um, one of the things that it really helped me do is learn how to calm down my nervous system so I could go in deeper and really embody all the work, all the um, spiritual and personal growth work I'd already been doing for the last five years. And most of the people who are in your audience probably have been on this journey of self-growth and a spiritual journey for a few years. And while we, at least for me, while I understood it in my mind, I even got it emotionally and spiritually. What I didn't completely get was how to really live it mm. physically. And um, doing the work with Lara in this year has really grounded me into truly, truly um, being myself acknowledging all parts of myself, including the parts that I rejected. I mean, I left corporate world 20, after doing 20 years and for a while, I just like, I don't want any part of working that way, but there were so many good things, so many valuable things I learned in that journey. Um, and now moving forward, I'm so easily able to incorporate the different parts of me and also acknowledge the parts of me and love the parts of me that I shamed and guilted too. So the work uh, for me, they were, <clears throat> I didn't mention it, but we did manifest an additional 50,000 last year as I stepped into this work. So there is the actual physical manifestation, which we all coming into this work for. But for me, the biggest thing was the actual internal shift because moving forward, the place I come to in manifesting what I want in my life is so much richer and so much more grounded. 
So if you guys are thinking about it, don't wait like me for a year. Just, just go for it. Oh, thank you so much. And this is what I hear over and over again is the money is great, but it's almost like the cherry on top. The real value is the inner shifts, but our brain doesn't want to know that. Our brain's like, show me the money, <laughs> show me the results. And yet the, the results are great, but it's how we're being inside them and behind them and with them that really is what brings us fulfillment. So thank you so much for so beautifully articulating and, and sharing your experience inside the mastermind. And it's just the beginning. It's I'm so excited for your next level as well. Um, and thank you for taking the time to share your story with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lara, for having me.